first thought. Submit spirit for that matter. I salute that vanity. Arise, Arise. awake, wake in a dream. dream. An inception of our reality. reality. So we so live. live, we love, we love. and then, and then there is there is music. We sing, we, sing. We, pray. we pray, we reflect. We return. In the infinite, in the infinite in between, between, the now, the now and that, that was, was faces, faces dance in our dreams. Some familiar, some, 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 some distant individual. In the irrelevance of time, time, we realize the past of the random random past. Learning the lesson that the brother of man 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 is far far more important than the the ego of any individual. Imagination becomes the sound of thought, traveling at the speed of the heart. So we paint. What is black love? Wow, that's a big question. Because you're talking about blackness and you're talking about love which are two almost indescribable things but for me black love is special because it's resilient we come from a people for so many years had to struggle to be together struggle just to have a family struggle just to have a union I mean if you come from Wow. If you come from where we come from, and just to remember a time when families were sold apart just because of their blackness, you couldn't be a family, you couldn't be one just because of the fact that you were black. It meant you were less than, or that familiar bonds didn't apply to you. It was almost like a privilege when families got a chance to be together, not a right. I just, wow, that's a big question. Because you're talking about blackness and you're talking about love, which are two almost indescribable things. But for me, black love is special because it's resilient. We come from a people for so many years had to struggle to be together, struggle just to have a family, struggle just to have a union. I mean, if you come from, uh, wow, if you come from where we come from, and just to remember a time when families were sold apart just because of their blackness, couldn't be a family, you couldn't be one just because of the fact that you were black. It meant you were less than or that familiar bonds didn't apply to you. It was almost like a privilege when families got a chance to be together, not a right, or just a human right. Black love is so resilient because we come through all of that. And we come through everything that we face every single day, the injustices of this world and what it's like to be black in America and be black around the world. When you have love, you have someone that you can share your feelings, your emotions, the injustice, the pain, the joy. You have someone you can share it with. Black love is beautiful because it's so strong. 
and so soulful and, and spiritual. Black love is, I don't know what it's like to be anything other than black. But I know as a black woman, my love is so intense because it comes from a place of loss. It comes from all the trials that I've gone through. It comes through comes from my gratitude and just being alive. So when I give my love, I'm giving all of me and all of the parts of me I'm surrendering from what I've been through, if that, that makes any sense. How critical are grandmothers to child development? For me, my grandmother was everything. Grandmothers are love. That should be on a t-shirt. Grandmothers are love. Grandmothers love you in a way that no one else, even their own children, I don't think they could, they could find that special place that grandparents have because they nurture you from a aspect of not being the sole disciplinarian but being able to amplify their love and attention and amplify the motivations of what they want for you. They're able to give it to you on such a more intense level because the parents are handling it day to day the mundane, the everyday, the things that need to be done. So grandparents are like bonus parents and they get to focus on the love. My grandmother was a, a loving grandmother. She was also a disciplinarian. I knew that if I stepped out of line, that there were consequences. But at the same time, there's never been a love in my life that has been as intense as the love that I have for my grandmother and that she had for me. When she passed, my world fell apart. And I had to bring myself together in strength knowing that that's what she would want for me. But just a, on a selfish level, when you have a true bond with your grandparents, it's like nothing else even matters. And when they leave, you know, a, a part of your world leaves. So they're definitely integral and instrumental and, man, I could see her face now. I want to talk to you about mindfulness what is mindfulness to you and how does it help one's well-being well mindfulness is kind of what I'm experiencing right now although the rawness and the pain and the emotion of just thinking about the loss of my grandmother is the first thing on my mind and in my heart right now I'm being mindful that this isn't the time or the place as Marvin Sapp would say for giving up and I'm concentrating on what my goal is and that's to be understood in this time and space so mindfulness is deliberately focusing on whatever it is that you want to happen or to be or to think about. Excuse me. And it's deliberately focusing on those things that are going to help you to be better or help you to stay focused or help you to stay on your grind. Mindfulness is something I try to practice every day because it's being in control of what you think about. 
because if you don't make an effort to be mindful then the world can just run away with you because there's so many things going on all the time the world is spinning at such a crazy pace that if you don't take a, your mind and your thoughts if you don't take control of them then you can just be a victim to whatever anybody wants to you know spill on you so it's taking control of your thoughts and I think it's very important I want you to give me a short verse from a poem that comes to mind and then tell me how important are women poets to the artist community today. A poem that I wrote or a poem that someone else wrote? Whatever comes to mind. Hmm. That's a tough one. I got like seven poems floating around in my mind, and they're all like, "Say me, say me." Another one saying freestyle. Another one saying whatever, whatever comes to mind, whatever you want to share. I am the descendant of a pretty black militant, an absentee, who missed his opportunity to watch me bloom. From the girl who threw tantrums in her room, confused, he didn't come back, ma, wasn't coming back, ma, didn't have our backs, but left a lasting impression. Nurtured in the womb of a soulful woman who danced until her belly swole with God's creation. And when she saw who was coming, couldn't escape the healing power of the beat. So with swollen feet, listen to beats and bass alone. That's the excerpt of a poem I wrote called Pretty Black Militant for my mother. Okay. Women's voices and poetry can't be denied. Although we're still in a place in the world where some women don't even have basic human rights to, to just be alive and be free and be in control of their own bodies and their own minds and who they marry and if and when they go to school or if they even can step out at night and be safe to go to Kroger's or do whatever it is they're doing. And in this world, women are still not safe. Women are still not honored fully as we should be. But we're such an important part of the world. There would be no world without us. We're mothers, we're daughters, we're sisters, we're aunts. We're griots, we're poets, we're teachers, we're mathematicians, astronauts, teachers, fire women, doctors. I mean, we're such a part of the landscape that we can't be taken for granted anymore. So when I listen to poems written by women, and when I write poems, I listen for that certain aspect that women bring to the conversation, whether it's a, a higher level of compassion, whether it's a higher level of passion, you know, or if it's just black girl magic. I listen for those, those 
parts of our personality and our being and our story that only we could tell. And it makes poetry an even more beautiful thing. We all know that it's important to drink water and water being the essence of all life. Uh, how does water enhance wellness for you? I see water as a cleansing agent when it's time to shower, bathe, wash our hair, brush our teeth, take care of ourselves. When you just think about how blessed you are that, you know, 50 miles from here, people don't even have clean water to be able to do that in 2019. Black people still don't have clean water in Flint, Michigan. And when you think about it, it's the most bastardest thing to even imagine that in Flint, Michigan, a car ride away, a CD car, a CD playing, and a car ride away, they don't have clean water, and they haven't had clean water, and no one is stepping up and taking responsibility and doing what needs to be done to give them the basic human right that they deserve because it's black people, people of color is suffering from it. If that had happened in Taylor, Michigan or in Arbor, Michigan or Berkeley, Michigan or any other city that was majority of, you know, non-black it would have been fixed by now. So it makes me angry that that's still the case in 2019. Because when you had an opportunity to stand in a shower of clean water, you realize just how grateful and blessed you are. So I see water as a cleansing agent. It's it's spiritual to be around water. It, it represents new beginnings to me because water is always flowing and it's just like endless possibilities when you sit by water, you know. So yes, it's important to drink our water, health as well. But for me, it's a spiritual and a cleansing thing. It's no better feeling than that squeaky clean feeling. One more question. Uh, how important and what is the value of music to you and the world? I saw a quote recently that says something to the effect of, don't quote me on it, but before children walk, they dance. And that is so true. My earliest memories of life revolve around music. The music that was playing in my house, probably the music my mom was playing when I was in utero, the music that I listened to or helped create when I go to a place of worship, which is completely different from the music I listen to or listen to in my days when I go to the party or go hang out. You know, that music is different. 
Then there's music for meditation, music for love, music for healing. I use it for everything. It's like being able to communicate your innermost emotions and feelings without talking. I think sometimes we talk too much. Everything I was always taught, everything you think doesn't have to come out. You know, some thoughts are just meant to be thoughts. And music helps me with that. It helps me get into a place where I meditate and I have my space and I think about the world and I think about my life. And sometimes, like in my one of my favorite songs, like a Maxwell song comes on, Ascension, I'm not thinking, I'm just being. I'm moving to the music and I'm appreciating life as I hear the drum snares and the horns and I hear the joy and a run of a voice sometimes it just brings you happiness so I think that all types of music that's why I love all types of music from classical to jazz to hip-hop to R&B I love all types of music because they all put you in a different space and like I said, if you're not in the mood to necessarily talk or be talked to, you can put on your music. That's why I think it's so funny when some people think that, that we're not on to it. But when sometimes when people are walking through airports or walking through the mall or walking down the street and they had their headphones on and they're just bopping when actually they're really not listening to anything, they just want independent space without being bothered by anybody and it's like the cardinal rule if you see somebody with headphones on you leave them alone <laughs> it's like oh they 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 jamming they you know you give them space it's like a, a mutual respect people have for music without even realizing that that's what they're doing is giving you respect that's that's what they're doing so a world without music, a world without art and poetry, I can't imagine it and I won't even try because I think it would it would it would be meaningless a life lived like that. Thank you very much. You're welcome.